a longtime civil rights crusader and author of seven books, Creative Insubordination, What Old Men Know, The Will Robinson Story, The Poetic Prancings of Mad John, The Poet Emperor of Earth, and his explosive autobiography, A Life on the Run, plus another upcoming poetry book, Athletes, Activism, and Apple Bows, a Detroit poetic epic. His books are available on Amazon.com or by calling 313-460-8272. That's 313-460-8272. Dr. Talford has been called a legend and also a lightning rod for controversy. A recipient of the City Council Spirit of Detroit Award and the Joe Lewis Foundation Spirit of the Champ Award. He was named Wayne State University's Alumnus of the Year, and a Detroit truck is named for him. His email is drjohntalfordedd at aol.com. That's dr. period j o h n t e l f o r d e d d at aol.com. Dr. Talford also has a show on WCHB AM 1340 that airs on Saturdays at 9.30 in the morning and Mondays at 6.30 in the evening. That's on WCHB AM 1340, Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. and Mondays at 6.30 p.m. And now, without further ado, I present to you that old native Detroiter, the one and only Dr. John Talford. Thank you, Charlotte Jones. A.K.A. Char J, author of A Ain't Always for Apple, A Ain't Always for Apple, an erotic adult alphabet book, which is going to sell like hotcakes once you get somebody representing you, Char. Yes. You know, we got to get cooking on that. My name is Detroit. Does that camera work? My name is Detroit. I'm a blue-collar town. Blue salt melts my mid-March snow. Speedy cars and sprinters spring from me. I father fierce fighters and funky music. In a Motown moment, I can spit the blues right back in a bureaucrat's eye. Have you never seen blue salt? No complex chemistry here, only the old color of a new sky. And there's a new sky dawning on Detroit today because, because, we have got Tamika Davis in the station today Welcome. on WJZZ. Tamika is Thank here. You. Thank she, you. She is here. I haven't introduced you yet. Uh, <laughs> Tamika is here, but I got to say this poem because the poem reminds me of you. Oh. The values of verse. Verse comes to us by pen or voice. We thus can always take our choice. Let me be also sure to mention that verse will gain us righteous vengeance. Via deft poetic arts that can topple oligarchs. Verse will clearly, plainly lay out what we poets dare to say out. Like gentle, mewling lambs, no more but rather with a fearsome roar as from some cacophonic core of lions. And we've got a lioness in the station today. We have a lioness in the person of Tamika Davis, who, oh, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you everything that's, that needs to be told about Tamika Davis. I'm going to let her tell you. So, Tamika, introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on the show today, Dr. Telford. Thank you so much, Char, for having me. And thank you, WJZZ, Roger, and everybody. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. I am Tamika Davis, also Diamond D. Uh, I am currently um, teaching Wayne County Community College. Anthropology uh, is my groove. That's my Thing that I love to do. Um, I'm also working with uh, Detroit Champions for Hope, uh, which is an early child early childhood education initiative uh, here in the city. Also working with uh, the Cody Rouge area, teaching seniors 
how to use their computers and laptops. That's been a really fun experience. And working with the UIN, the Urban Information Network. Yeah, that's uh, that's my half miler. You know, uh, right. that's my kid. You know, he was he was my best half miler back in the early 1960s. Really? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's Tim Moore. What? Yeah, he was running a half mile, 157. You know, what? he he could he could smoke. He could get, he, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. They're one of my kids. They still got got a lot of them here and there in the city, and, and he's one of them. And you know, he he runs my my WCHB show. He runs it every every week. I did not know that. Yeah, so uh, he's doing me that favor, and I'm trying to sell my books that way. But anyway, we're, we're talking about you, not me. Uh, tell me a little That's bit really about, cool. about th this uh, U.S. media, because you didn't mention that. IJS, IJS Media. So IJS Media is also my media company, um, IJS-Media.com. So far, we usually do commercials for small businesses. Okay. Help them bring their their words, their advertisement, their goals to life, um, as well as documentaries. Okay. So how's that going? Is it picking up for you? Um, it has been a bit quiet mm -hmm. this last year, but in 2023, we'll get things going again because we'll do the vagina monologues. We're going to okay. revisit that Okay. produce. Vagina monologues. Yes. All Let's right. have another production of that. Okay. Yeah, I can remember the last time you were on my show, we, we were both doing erotic poetry. Yes, having yeah. so much fun. And I, I, th I think you, I think you out, out eroticed me. You know, <laughs> I had, uh, I had some fairly erotic stuff, but oh, you know, you had some good stuff. You yeah. got some good stuff, some really good stuff. Yeah. I like, I really. Yeah. Enjoy your writing. I was I was afraid to to send that show to the school people, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are other reasons why they had to get it though, so uh, they got it. Well, but they're, uh, they're all adults too. Yeah, and and you said on your list, you know, WCCCD. And then Project Wow. Oh yeah, Project uh, Wow. Yeah, so Project Wow. I have another company called Essential Essence, and we started. Project Wow, which actually came from doing the vagina monologues. The ladies who were involved really wanted to have a space for supporting the issues around the vagina and the experiences of your vagina and your vulva and your clitoris because they are all these distinct things and understanding all of these distinct things and how they work together, integrated to... So, I don't know if I'm sending this one to the school people. <laughs> <laughs> so the vagina monologues, um, they talk about good and bad for the vagina. Yes, okay. it does. It's, it's quite educational, All right. actually. Yeah, what, what is or what are the vagina monologues exactly? So if you could imagine... Um, is this quite famous? Exactly, they're quite yes, yeah. yes. So they are what you would imagine. Monologues, you know, the, the, the vagina talking about you know, the vagina talk. experience you know, the personification you know the uh, the uh, the uh, the poetic uh, uh, figure of speech personification the vagina yes, talk absolutely just like I have my legs talk you know my old legs you know sometimes talk to me and they say to me hey John uh, let's get going why aren't we out there on the track and I got to remind them that uh, I'm on a cane now you know right. but, <laughs> right. but at one time you know I was uh, okay I ain't gonna go into that I was beating everybody then. But anyway, um, tell us uh, a little more about Project WOW and, so, and, and about erogenous, if you want to talk about that too. Okay. That's okay. Because we already started talking about it, we might as well do it. Okay, right. So there's also erogenous. There's, there's just like a little list, huh? Uh, erogenous is the band I'm a part of. Okay. And um, we have an album out called The Encounters Project. It is available on all your streaming media platforms for music, iTunes, uh, Spotify. Sounds really good, too. Apple. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is a listening experience of music and erotica, so it is an opportunity for you to put on something different with you and someone you care about and experience it. It's not just for sort of just 
Can riding in the car. It's it's for experiencing. Do you remember when I had you at the Yacht Club? Uh, we did that um, the poetry. Uh, you knocked it out of the park that day. I think uh, I think you captured the whole the whole show that day well, with thank you. Uh, that stuff uh, <laughs> that you were so doing. So we're gonna we gonna work on that for the new year, right? Yeah, we're gonna do some more. Yeah, we, we're gonna do some more. Maybe around Valentine's Day. Yeah, maybe that'd be a good time to do it. February 14. Put a little something together. Okay, y'all heard it, people. Mm -hmm. Heard it here, huh? Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> We might be a little too spicy for the yacht club. We may have to move our. Uh, well, I, <laughs> she, no, she was spicing a lot of sight that day, man. I, I said, whoa. Well, we can be sensual without being raunchy, right? Yeah, they were we kids in the that. audience that day. We may have to move this somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no children allowed. Yeah. I ordinarily send this to my kids, you know, but my kids, of course, are high school kids, but they're going to see this show. And you're going to get a tape of it. You can use, okay. it, use it any any way you want. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. So you want to talk about uh, what do you want to talk about? I talk about okay. the. Okay. All right. So I didn't. I didn't. I do want to. We'll go back to Project Wild because that's my little passion project. So we can go back to that. But I do want to talk about a couple of the other actively involved things. So one is, of course, Detroit Champions for Hope. Detroit Champions for Hope is um, a nonprofit organization that is currently working with Hope Stars here. Um, as uh, a partner in implementation as we help to create um, sort of a new landscape for the young people in the city a city okay. making Detroit a city f that supports its youth yeah. and we start by supporting their caregivers okay. so the philosophy is that um, we support children zero eight to zero to eight and that their parents and caregivers are their first teachers and as their first teachers they need resources they need to uh, be able to navigate the resources that the city and the state um, and federal government make available to you sometimes there'll be programs and things but there'll be a lot of obstacles in the way and um, we work to connect people but we also help navigate through those different systems. Um, during COVID, we were very impactful in connecting people to resources, diaper banks, uh, mm -hmm. making sure people have uh, formula, making sure that they were able to get COVID tests if they wanted, you know, the home test so that they can travel from place to place and engage, making sure uh, st children were still able to be supported um, at home, parents and children were able to be supported at home around the home teaching model. Um, and bringing issues to the state government as well. We, we, when COVID first started, there was an issue around um, the masks as we were oh, yeah. starting to get the mask up mandate. Yeah. And uh, the police were showing up in community and giving people tickets for not having masks. Really? Mm. Well, that's not how you protect and serve, is it? No, it's not. You should have the mask with you and provide it to the community so that mm. they can be safe. Like yeah, that's the first I've ever heard of that. that well, it didn't go chicken. far because oh, okay. when we started, we, we petitioned the, government, the governor immediately and to she stop. was able to help curb that situation before yeah, it that, began to spread. Never heard of that. You're mm -hmm. watching WJZZ Cool TV, live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, and other top social media platforms. Like us, follow us, share us, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching WJZZ Cool TV, the coolest station in the world. Yes. And thank you for that station identification. Char J, author of A Ain't Always for Apple. Uh, and we are hosting Tamika Davis in the station today, the dynamic Tamika Davis, who has got her, her finger in so many pies right. that I can't even count them all, but uh, they're all very progressive activities that she's doing. You're working with these, uh, these mothers? Yes. Okay. Now, do you work with the kids, too? Yes. Okay. Do you have any, uh, any access to teaching them pre-literacy or literacy? Absolutely. So one of the things that we do, I am actually, for the organization, I'm the six-a-day fairy. 
Say that again. I'm the six a day fairy. What the six that? a day fairy. Okay. So one of the <laughs> things that we do is we teach our parents about these six really easy, free and accessible things that you do with your child to help their social and cognitive development. Oh, good. And it is talk, read, sing, hug, encourage, and play with your child. Oh, great. It doesn't take long. It's, it's free and accessible and available yeah. to everyone. Yeah. But yeah. all of these different things impact the child in different ways. Playing helps them develop an imagination. Talking, when you wait and talk to them and you wait for them to give their cues and they talk back, it helps build their confidence. Absolutely. Right. When you encourage them, it helps build their confidence and their self-esteem. And so your self-esteem is something that if you get that in order, Everything it's else follows. Right. right. Yeah. Where do you do this? Uh, we do it, well, I am in District 7, the city's District 7, so I, but. What as area the, is that? Uh, that's on the west side of Detroit, Cody Rouge area. Oh, yeah. But um, the Six a Day Ferry goes wherever, all over the city. So the organization, Detroit Champions for Hope, we have uh, hubs in different, um, in every district. And so I was at the Bel Air last weekend. Um, theater, over the Bel Air Theater, as yes. they were premiering. We had we had free tickets for the parents and okay. kids to come out and watch uh, Wakanda Forever. Oh, wow. And we gave out uh, free drinks and popcorn with that, and gave away books. Mm. So yes, we're all over the literacy thing. Absolutely, that's super important, right? You know, the Bel Air used to be a drive-in. Before you guys were born. Ah, yeah. I can imagine it's yeah, in a yeah. good space. It's I used to spot. go there when I was in high school, my second school, Denby, and we would I missed go, go to the drive. Bel Air. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, yeah. West oh, yeah. Side. Them was the days. Yes, yes. That's when I was an athlete at Denby <laughs> High and, and uh, into the ladies quite a bit. Yeah, that's yes, when he was yes. all that. Yeah, oh, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back, back in the day. Back, back in, in the, the day. day. Yeah, I, I was in trouble half the time, man. I was beating them off with a stick. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't good. It wasn't a good thing. Um, what about the sisterhood? Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so the sisterhood is the uh, project I'm working with with the Urban Information Network, UNI. It is a show where there are women of color who are educators and activists and we interview different people and show our different perspectives mm -hmm. on various issues. Yes, they interviewed going me. All over yes. the city. The yes. sisterhood interviewed you? They did. Yes. Oh, okay. It was fun. It was. Yeah. <laughs> the sisterhood uh, interviewing a sister. Mm -hmm. that was, that was we do cool. lots of that. Yep. We interview lots of sisters. Who, who, uh, who are the sisterhood? The sisterhood is Elena Herrera. Herrada. Herrada. Yeah. Um, myself, uh, Sananda Carrada, who used to be your uh, my co-host. Co yeah, yes. she's almost like yes. my daughter, Sananda. Man, she's I'm real close to her. Yes. Uh, and and Elena Harada, you know, was on the school board, the good school board. Yes. That appointed me superintendent back in 2012. And, and that, that was when I was trying to get a, a, a literacy program in there that would have worked. Right. You know, the one that they have now is not working, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I haven't given up on that, even though I, I got defeated in my school board race. Right, right. I uh, didn't spend enough money. You know, the incumbents, <laughs> uh, well, really, you know, they spent a million dollars between yeah. the four of them, you know, that, that got in. Uh, it wasn't their money, though. I think some of it came from DeVos, is what I heard, but anyway. And uh, uh, Nubia Warford Polk. Oh yeah, yeah, Nubia, right? <coughs> yeah, Nubia, Elena, and uh, and 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 the lady, you know, who is who is my co-host. I mean, she is one heck of a lady, you know. Yes. She teaches with you, I think. You know, yes, she, there was yes, at, another uh, anthropologist. Yeah, anth anthropology, Wayne County mm -hmm. Community Fellow College, uh, Sunanda, yes. Sunanda Samadar uh, Corrado. Yes. So that is the sisterhood, and what is what's in store now for the sisterhood? What are they going to be doing? Uh, the sisterhood, we are on a, a little bit of a hiatus as far as production, but there are still shows being posted. We're currently working in the community, hosting community meetings around um, I three seventy five. Oh yeah, so yeah. I was at that meeting. I can remember uh, Sunanda and Joe picked me up and took me to that meeting. And, and I spoke out against uh, uh, that I-375 filling in. I mean, I'm, I'm totally opposed to that. Right. I, you so know. what is that about? Because I'm 
I'm not so uh, the city has decided to move forward with a plan for I-375, which used to be Black Bottom and Paradise Valley. So for those of audience members who might not know what Black Bottom and Paradise Valley is back in um, the late 1800s and up to like the 1930s and 40s. This was an area rich with uh, migrants, um, people who came from all over as well as uh, the blacks. And it wasn't called Black Bottom due to the black people being there. It was because it was a rich farmland. There was soil that was really rich and um, farmers lived in that area. And as the city began to progress, it also became an area that attracted a lot of blacks who were moving up from the south. And they began to uh, set up community there. And, and in that community, they were prosperous. Oh, they absolutely. were able to have restaurants and nightclubs. And um, on top of having the business in, there was an entertainment sector, which was really, really big. That's the part that's called Paradise Valley. And there were lots and lots of uh, people who would go on to do, do great things who played in that area. But um, that part of our history is really kind of gone. And, then young people now are completely disconnected from it because it is like physically been removed. It right? was dynamic too. I remember it. It went into the fifties and even the sixties. Uh, I can, re you know, I was in the Detroit Varsity Club, which was a group of uh, black athletes that mm -hmm. sent kids to college. I was the only white uh, athlete on, in the ex-athlete in the Detroit Varsity Club. We used to meet in the Rondora Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was run by Sonny Wilson, if I'm not mistaken. I th yeah, it was Sonny Wilson, and yeah. uh, I got to meet him. Yeah. Uh, it, it was dynamic. I mean, that, that was the heart of the city, the heart of Detroit then. And, and um, when, when the freeway came through, the I-75 mm -hmm. freeway came through, that wiped out a lot of a lot of that neighborhood. It also wiped out neighborhoods uh, as far north as near Pershing High School. Uh, my my one of my really good quarter milers, uh, uh, Reggie Bradford, uh, whom I ended up uh, getting at Michigan on a, on a track scholarship. Uh, I lost him <coughs> his senior year. You know he he had to move to McKenzie because his house was gone. Mm -hmm. You know okay. I mean it, it was. It was urban renewal yes. that, that the, those in the know called Negro yes. removal is yes. basically what they called it. That's, yeah. And, yeah. It, and it was very deliberate. Yes. Very deliberate. Just like what's happening with the Detroit public schools, I'm afraid, some in some quarters are saying is very deliberate. You know, Helen Moore thinks that it's no accident that these kids aren't being taught to read. So uh, I don't know if I totally ascribe to that opinion, but again, I'm, I'm digressing. Um, uh, so well, anyway, if they're not taught to read, then what are we doing? What are we doing? Exactly. What are we doing? Exactly. Well, now they'll become adults who can't read because yes. not only can't they read, they're passing them along as yes, if they could. They are, and then they they make up the law that you don't even realize is damaging. Like no child left behind is social promotion, but if you don't understand that, then you're like, okay, no child left behind. Everybody gets to pass, but everybody doesn't get to pass. Well, that was Bush. You know, there was no rich child left behind. You know, <laughs> it, it was it, it, no, that they did it to the poor kids too. Yeah, they did it to the poor kids too. Yeah, well, they didn't leave any rich kids behind. Is what I'm saying. It was the poor kids that got got, got left. They just socially left. promote people who are not ready. To as adults to be adults that's and right then you have that's right adults that don't know anything and then exactly. they get frustrated and they do stupid things and and it's a, just a vicious circle and but that is I, yeah I it is a that's vicious by circle. design it is by design yeah right? that's what that's what helen says and that's what uh, many other folks that i yeah. whose opinion opinions i respect to produce a population of inmates and employees right you don't yeah. want innovative thinkers. Yeah, and, and you don't want an educated and stimulated citizen. That's right. You can't run it effectively. Yeah, inmates and employees and, uh, and residents of the cemetery. Underpaid employees, yes. let's just say that. Yes. That's right. That's right. Well, let me ask you, um, uh, what exactly is the sisterhood doing with the community meeting, this community meeting that uh, you guys involved me in? Right. Uh, this, uh, we met a couple times at Burt's Marketplace um, to talk to community and find out what they wanted to do. If they even knew what was going on, like you said. Some I didn't know what didn't was going on until I went to that Some meeting. Some people, right, didn't even know. So the city is proposing to spend, they are saying $100 million, but it's going to cost more than that, to uh, take I-75, I-375, and fill it up with dirt and create a boulevard. 
Now, <coughs> when something this major goes on in the city, usually there is some community input. Yeah. Because they're supposed to... There should be community input. Discuss it with community. And they haven't been doing and that. And they haven't been doing that. Not, a, not publicly like the way it should be. Not with integrity and in totally transparent, you know. But what's the intention? Oh. I mean, wh what are they going to do with this, uh, with this uh, space? What are they going to put high rises, businesses? Uh, I mean, a what boulevard, so whatever. What, what section are we talking? Uh, the I-375, so that right that downtown. section that comes downtown, the section of the freeway that is actually coming through downtown and that part that uh, comes down to Jefferson, you know how you can drive the freeway and come all the way and get up on Larned or Lafayette or Jefferson, all that. That right there. Right. Okay. So what's that going to do for grassroots? Ordinary Detroiters, or for the people that you displace, the families that right. you displace, yeah. what's the gonna wealth do that you displace. Yeah, what's right? it going to do for them? That's uh, a, we know that's the answer to that. It's not going right. to do a damn thing for them, right. but it's not. That is a do. question for our mayor. So, okay, I, I, are you are you listening, uh, Mr. Duggan? <laughs> Uh, well, he will be, because because uh, I'm I'm going to send this to him. You know, I send him my stuff all the time. Do you? Yeah, uh, I don't know uh, if it uh, changes his mind about anything. But Does Mr. Duggan want to come on and talk about it? Uh, any time. <laughs> yeah, any 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 time. So how come you how come you chose I-75 as as the topic today? Because I know you wanted to talk about I-75 today. Well. Um I just thought I, I it was, yeah, I thought it was important for just people to, I was surprised at how many people aren't aware of no, what no. is happening. No, yeah. they don't have a clue. And, so and, and I, I consider myself well informed, you know, people are sending me stuff all the time. I didn't know about this. Me either. And, uh, you know, it's almost insidious, you know, they sneak something in and bam, you know, it, it, then it's done. And then nobody had a chance to talk about it, uh, protest it. Uh, talk about alternatives. How much is this money? How, how much are they talking about spending? Uh, initially, a hundred million, but oh, good lord! It I mean, more than that. I, I think uh, the schools could use a hundred million around about now. I think the damn out. streets could use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the community, yes, a, a bunch of other spaces and places could use. There's got to be a better, a, a better use of that money. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I do think that that's a waste of time and money. You know. And then who will be getting these contracts? to do these rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Who will be getting the contracts to build the buildings on the boulevard? Who will be getting the contracts to have the businesses that will populate the boulevard? Um, how are they going to reroute that traffic? That's another thing. Um, I mean, you gotta go around and then that would take you, until they build something else, that would take you through the neighborhood, so. Let, me, let, me, let me ask, uh, before you do the next, uh, Station identification is—is is this a fait accompli? I mean, is it already decided? Is there any way that that it can be rerouted? Well, or, we or we the citizens deal? we really are quite unsure. Okay, so we we do, we really don't know if it, if it's a done deal. Where is it? Where is the uh, city council on this? Um, don't they don't they have to approve it? <laughs> well, they that, seem to we be got a new we got a new city council. Hopefully, some of them progressive folks. You know, you got Letitia Johnson on there. You got uh, Calloway. You got you got some people. You got Mary Waters. I mean, where are they coming from on this? Well, I, I'd be very will interested see, to know. We will see. The citizenry will definitely see how the council represents them. Could a strong enough uh, community protest? Uh, prevent this? I believe so. Okay. You're watching the Dr. John Telford Detroit Show, live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, and other top social media platforms. Like, follow, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching WJZZ Cool TV, the coolest station in the world. You have something, John? You have a Well, I got one thing that I, I never want to forget, if I know it's good for me. <laughs> Uh, Miss Virginia Starkey, fondly known simply as V. The proprietress of V's Boutique offers a wide range of fine clothing and accessories for ladies. 
You can find all sizes of women's fine apparel in V's one-stop excellent customer service at V's Boutique where you can't find anything like this anywhere else in Detroit anymore. V's is at 16423 East Warren Avenue right around the corner from the Alger Theater and right around the corner from one mm. of the f few libraries that's still open in the mm. city. And, uh, and it is at 16423 East Warren. Uh, so call, call V, make an appointment. 248-662-6622 uh, is the phone and she will be very happy to accommodate you. Right. And, and we are interviewing Tamika Davis, the dynamic Tamika Davis wearing her Santa Claus hat uh, and, and uh, my, my, my co-host is wearing a Santa Claus shirt Yay. and I'm wearing a red shirt <laughs> and it actually says on this side it says <laughs> Detroit, <coughs> Detroit Red Wings which by the way I do not uh, particularly uh, really? follow. They, no. need, they need some help from Santa. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, they, they do, the Pistons do, the Lions though, the Lions Look are at the Lions! Yeah, yeah. Look at what's going on yeah. with the Lions! The Lions oh are god. seven and seven. They are seven and seven. Oh my god! We they are, are on top in our division. Oh my god! Yeah, they are poised. They are poised to to Goodness make the playoffs. Gracious. They're going <laughs> to make. I'm hopeful that they will make the playoffs. You know, right. I've been. I was so disappointed when they let Matt Stafford go. You know, and then he went right. to out out west and won the Super Indeed, Bowl. Great. Yep. And 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 uh, uh, Galladay and and who else did they let? Oh, uh, the the Dominican Sue. You know, <gasps> that, that incredible uh, defensive lineman. Uh, and he went to a Super Bowl I know, team and, and won. Went, yeah, I yeah. know, right. And so. I'll never forget Barry Sanders. You know, they let yeah. him go. If yeah. they hadn't uh, let Barry Sanders go, if they kept him one more year, I think they would have won the Super Bowl. But anyway, yes. I'm... Yeah. You know, Lions, being a fan of the Lions is like being in a dysfunctional relationship. <laughs> and it's yeah. right now, like, should I trust it? <laughs> <laughs> should, I, should I let my guard down and go with and, it? And show my love? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, i got to admit, I have not seen a Lions game since Glenn Davis was a running back for the Lions. That was the Olympian, Glenn Davis. He's one of my major uh, uh, <laughs> uh, rivals when I was on the U.S. team back in, back in the old days. But I used to get free tickets. He gave me free tickets. That was when they were in Tiger Stadium, the oh, old wow. Tiger Stadium. So I have never seen a Lions game well, uh, where, they, cousin, where they are now. He loves them win or lose. Okay. So you, that's Great. just how you have to be. Great. All win right. or lose. No, I, I do too. You know, I suffer with them every happy. year. Yeah. <laughs> he is overjoyed right now. Yeah. Yeah, I was, in fact, I can remember uh, going to a Lions game one time when they played in the old UAD Stadium, and I was a Boy Scout. That was back in the 1940s, and I was an usher. You know, Boy Scouts <laughs> got in free if they ushered, you know, so. What? But, yeah, yeah, that was when I was uh, <laughs> uh, a little, little shit, you know, back in the old days. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was ushering. Okay. And, and, uh, yeah, they lost, by the way. That oh, was, uh, damn. Lost that time, too, but. Okay, so we've talked about the sisterhood. We've talked about I-375. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and uh, you want to say anything else about the desired outcome? I mean, do we have an outcome that, that we have spent? You know what? We need to get the, uh, uh, the organizations together. They're all in silos, you know. My organization, mm -hmm. uh, National Action Network, mm -hmm. we need to get that involved. Mm -hmm. We need to get uh, BAM involved by any means necessary. We need to get the, uh, uh, the the Michigan chapter of the ACLU involved. If everybody got together and said, hey, wait a minute, what's the benefit to the ordinary Detroiter for this thing in I-375 that all you guys are planning these magnificent plans for? You know, how, how, are, how is the ordinary guy in the street going to benefit? How is that going to happen? He's not. It's no, he's not. And she is not. They are not. So uh, we've got to find an alternative again. For how much money was that again? A hundred million. Uh, One hundred million dollars to start. Okay, give that a hundred million dollars to the schools and let's get a, a, a reading program in there that works uh, so that the kids, you know, don't end up on the dole, you know, or, or in, in prison uh, or, or, or digging ditches or in the cemetery. You know, and that's, it's that's mainly our, our males that are Oh yes. The most. Oh no question Absolutely. about it. Most girls find a way. Find a way. But boys they don't. They if somebody's not on their head, 
like do 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 then they're like, they just fall by the wayside mm -hmm. they get frustrated because they yes. weren't taught and then you know the love the world isn't loving and nurturing towards them right yeah, oh yeah, the, the, the young men are the ones that are hit the hardest. And, and you know, I, I am the poet in residence. My resident school is uh, Frederick Douglass, which is an all-male school. And I've got some kids who can't read. Uh, high school kids, okay? And, and uh, we, we've, we've got to turn this reading program around. It's got to be turned around. And until, until we do that, the city's not coming back. Uh, we're, we're not educating our, our, our kids to read. I mean, what's a school district for? Uh, it it has, to, has, to, has, has to teach, teach the kids, kids to read. So anyway, um, how, can, how can people find out more information about uh, what you're doing uh, regarding this uh, 375 uh, campaign? Uh, 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 follow the Urban Information Network w, uh, and DETIPTV.com. Okay, I you know I was over at Denby High School yesterday uh, um, reading my poetry, and uh, <laughs> kids were very receptive. Uh, I'm a I'm a Denby alum, you know I, I graduated from there in January of '54. Okay. Uh, I went to Northwestern and then got put out of Northwestern, sent to live with my dad, and graduated from Denby. But um, kids were very receptive. But there there was one young man there. Uh, that, that the teacher, uh, Miss Thornton, Miss Tracy Thornton, uh, took me aside and took the young man aside, you know, when, when, when my readings uh, were over, and said, uh, Dr. Telfer, I want you to talk to this kid. And I'm looking at the kid, he's about that big, you know. And I said, well, I'd be happy to talk to him. You know, he's, a, he's a track man, he's a sprinter, like you were, he's a, he's a football player here. Uh, he did all the things that you did here. But he is not doing his schoolwork, and he is, and 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 there are seven or eight local universities and some as far away as Southern California who are after this kid. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're worried here in Good school man. that he's not doing his schoolwork to the extent that needs to happen. Right. So I, kid's name, uh, well I won't say it on the air. <laughs> uh, although one of these days I may say, be, may be saying it if this kid doesn't straighten out, but I, I'm going to. Uh, oh, this is current. Oh, this is current right oh, okay. now. Yeah. I yeah. About and, 1954. Right. No, 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 no. This this was yesterday. Oh, okay. And and uh, and, and and I told this young man. Now I'm looking up at him. You know, he's about six feet five. You know, I I I, I told him. Uh, I'm gonna make you make uh, you into a project you know we're gonna we're gonna get you uh, doing their schoolwork because if you don't do your schoolwork guess what ain't no gonna be no athletic scholarship for right. you and and this kid is is all everything okay and and I, I told him hey you know you've got a gift you've got a gift you're, you're gonna get a free education you're gonna take it out of the ghetto you're gonna have a free education just as I did I had a free education, you know, because I could run, right. you know, but, but, but all of your classmates, most of your classmates haven't been blessed by God the way you have, but uh, you can't throw it away by, by, by not doing your schoolwork. So he was kind of listening, and I said, um, I'm going to give you 48 hours to be in touch with me, and I gave him my, my little card, you know, and, and uh, a little, little, little card here, I don't know if it's my new card, but I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. I, I gave my little card and I said, I want you to be in touch with me within 48 hours. Well, that was, uh, that was almost 48 hours ago and I have not been in touch with him. So I'm going to be back in touch with his principal, with his assistant principal, with the teacher and say, I have not heard from this young man yet. So uh, would you induce him to get in touch with me? And again, that was a digression. But, but it's an important one because these are the, <coughs> these are the things that you are doing, yeah. Tamika. You're doing this with kids, and, and you've been doing all these things, and I'm doing all these things, and we've got to keep on doing it Absolutely. because these kids are counting on us. We're the adults. That's right. We're supposed to be taking care of them. That's right. We're not supposed to be exploiting them. That's right. Uh, but that's a, a too often. We're supposed to it, nurture it, them, that's, teach them, help them grow, ground them inspire them, guide them, direct them, protect them. That's what we're supposed to do as the adults. That's true. Adults. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyway. 
What other community projects you got going, uh, Tamika? Tell us uh, about that. Well, my passion project, back to that, Project WOW. So, um, Project WOW, we are coming to the end of our first year of it living outside of in my head and in my heart. And so I feel very good about that. There's almost 90 women. Um, what exactly is Project WOW? Okay, yes, thank you. That's a great question. <laughs> <Junior>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Project WOW uh, WOW stands for Women of Worth um, Women of Worth? Women of Worth Okay. And yeah. I invite every woman to join Because every woman has worth And it is a space for us To come together To share uh, Our many different experiences as women To be encouraged and poured into Supported um, as women, um, but it's also a space that we very intimately discuss, again, experiences around our vaginas. There's lots of that because that's sort of my niche space. <laughs> 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 sort of, you know, okay. yeah. area that I'm passionate about, the vagina, the vulva, all of that. Well, that area does bring life. It does bring life, so it's really important. <laughs> And yeah, it's that's, where, that's where life springs from. Is it true. is important. So we can talk about that in an esoteric way so I can share this with school people. <laughs> yes. Uh, but then there's also a lot of trauma experienced. Yeah. Mm. And women don't have enough support around to expressing, that. yes, that mm. trauma, healing from that trauma. Too many families keep secrets around the yeah. trauma. Yeah. And we are a space that just really says that's awesome bullshit. And what happened to you is not your unique fault. To you, it's your not unique. You're not by yourself. It's not your fault. And we are we are here to heal. We are here to heal. That that is what that space is for. And so every week um, you get what is called wow words. Okay. Uh, to Thank your you phones. Those. Thank you. She sends them to me every oh, really? Monday morning. Okay. <laughs> every okay. yeah, the women who are involved. What are some wild words? Uh, wild words are just words of encouragement to help okay. you get through every week, every okay. week to okay. help you remember that you are connected to the divine spirit of God. And I need those sometimes. Sometimes I, when I wake up and I hear the ding, 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 because she sends them so early in the morning, mm -hmm. 7.30, 8.00. Right. <laughs> Got to get it out the way for the day start or else. I'm like, that's Tamika. <laughs> I know who it is when the phone rings. And I get up and I read them, and sometimes I fall back asleep. But I, later on in the day, I say, thank you, sister. So <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, thank men you. Need, need some thank wild words, too. It ain't just women who need wild well, words. You're absolutely true. So what would we be men of worth? Ma, mo. <laughs> <laughs> mo, mo down. Yeah. That's my thing. Uh, you're, you're right. The fellas absolutely need it. Absolutely <laughs> need it. <laughs> Let me it's do important. this first before we get into something else. Okay. If you're watching WJZZ Cool TV, live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, and other top social media platforms. Like, follow, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching WJZZ Cool TV. It's the coolest station in the world. In the world. In the world. <laughs> well, it's it, it's one of them, no question about it. No. You know, I also like you know uh, D E T I P T V. I also but like that. Uh, ain't no here. We I know. W C H B. I am thirteen forty. But we're all but, <laughs> but, but we're all about the same thing. You know, we're all in independent journalism, yeah. and that, and we have to stand up for independent journalism and, and tell the truth. Tell the truth to our youth. Yes. You know, well, too often that ain't go. happening. It, 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 right it, 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 it is good. not happening. But uh, uh, thank you again for that station identification, Char. You are welcome. Uh, author of uh, A Ain't Always for Apple. Uh, Mark Blank Sr. and Mark Blank Jr. run Sinbad's Restaurant at East Jefferson on the Detroit River in Detroit, on Detroit's east side. And it is Detroit's best restaurant, in my estimation. It's right up there with the Yacht Club uh grill and it's also um, there's an, there's another restaurant you know Sinbad's I, I gotta say it does advertise my uh, my radio show on WCHB so this is kind of mutual I'll advertise them they advertise me but there's there's another uh, restaurant that has asked now to advertise me and that is the pancake house all right uh, on, uh, on
that says uh, it's got it's got all my information, and and there's a there's a thing that's in this paper here. Okay. And I don't know if let's see, is it on the other? It's on the other side. I'm gonna. Here, wait a minute. No, it's. Uh, it's right there. It's, it's right here. Here's yeah. Th this. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, can 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 can. Uh, can the camera see? I don't know if the camera can see it. Can the camera see? But uh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna Maybe. they're gonna post this uh, in a prominent place, and in turn, I am going to advertise them. Because, you know, this is how I stay on the air. You know, uh, I, I advertise my books uh, this way. But uh, we have got Tamika Davis in the, in the studio today. And she has been v her usual dynamic self oh, so in, in, in her Santa Claus hat. Uh, and um, and we're, we're interviewing her regarding all of her activities. You know, Wayne County Community College <laughs> District where she teaches. Oh, my God. All right. That's yeah. cute. Hey, isn't that you something? You need a little bell on there. Right. Yeah, ding, 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 I think I think right. We're so so yeah, we're with at. with Project Wild, I would like for any any of the ladies who are curious and interested to please reach out right. um, on Facebook. There is a there's a group for Project Wild, um, and then I am Diamond D on Instagram and Diamond Davis on Facebook. So please do reach out and get in touch so that we can pour into one another. As we move forward because we'll have some fun stuff coming up for project wow as we move into the new year we'll be having of course a vision board party coming up soon so people can begin to get that energy into place we had one actually in october and people wanted to do it again so um we'll be having that coming up and we'll be doing the vagina mind law so if you want to come and um audition you know be a part of that production, please do reach out. Do you um, guys meet in person or is it a lot of Zoom? Or? Uh, we do both. We okay. do both. So initially we start off on Zoom, but then as we get closer to show dates, you know, you have to have energy. And so we want to see you in person and we want to be able to, you know, act off one another. And there are certain parts that require multiple women. So let me ask. So are we taking people's stories and and that's what we're presenting or are you or is it scripted it is scripted okay. it is scripted um i'm working on that other one though okay. we're still in the works for that other one this one is scripted it was written by eve insler back in the 80s she interviewed she's a psychologist who interviewed a lot of women um and found that there were certain themes that continued to come up as she would interview them um, around their vaginas. And so she began to put together this vagina monologue. And so it talks about like the angry vagina. There's a vagina that's angry because it doesn't have things in the world to suit it. Uh, when you go to the gynecologist, you get the cold duck lips that they shove inside. And mm. you get the cotton with the uh, tampons that are dry and, and just... And that caused, not, uh, what was it, toxic shock syndrome. Right, so right. Okay. These things are, are killing the vagina, of killing women. And right. The vagina the stuff be treated gently. Yes, yes, yes. That's what the <laughs> angry vagina be saying, okay? Okay. There's no and, respect for the vagina. Right. <laughs> and then there's, there's a vagina that um, had not had an orgasm until they were uh, in their senior years. And so that's an mm. experience. It's called the flood. Then there's... Um, that's a man's fault. It is, but we too, as well, women, to take we aren't of your own stuff. Let's just leave it at that. Go ahead. Yeah, and <laughs> we as women, we aren't taught that we are supposed to be pleased in the bedroom. We are taught to please. please. We are taught to mm. be available mm. versus. And if, you, and if you are looking for your pleasure, then something's wrong with you. Right. You know. Right. So. You are too aggressive. You're all this, but you know that's awesome bullshit, ladies. Yes. <laughs> Ask for what you want. Because I know some women that have not, and I'm talking about women yes, in their grown 60s ass and 70s women that have never had an orgasm. That's sad. It that is, is sad. Because <laughs> you've been doing it, got kids. Right. You, you, ain't, you ain't, come on now, you ain't doing it right. All, All right, right, so wrap it up for us. We're <laughs> ready. Oh, yeah, is there a, an email or a phone number that you want to share? Uh, Sure. So in addition to following me, um, again, Project Wow on Facebook or Diamond D on Instagram, um, and Twitter, um, you can also reach out to me at um, 
Detroit's Diamond D at gmail.com. That's Detroit's Diamond D at gmail.com. And then 248-752-8596. That is like <laughs> right here. So talk about erogenous for me. I mean, we should have had Tim call in. Yeah, that so erogenous, yeah, erogenous. That would have cool. been cool. Yeah. We're doing some that. great things. We should be, we're going to be writing some new material, uh, doing some poetry, um, absolutely applying for some new shows. So we're hoping to be out there just a little bit more with some live shows. Can we do include. some of the art club again? Want to do something there? Well, I would love to, yeah, yes. Let's, let's, yes. let's get that set up. Let's Explain get that set like up. you guys is sound because it's unique and it's different okay thank you so our sound is uh of course some neo soul some old school but then there are some original pieces um that tim has uh produced that tim has is great tim is multi-talented yes yes, yes. 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 keyboard player piano player yes. tim just yes. does some yes. of everything yes, yes. tim um, ellerby so yes. your style is kind of like uh flowetry Floetry, yeah, you're and then we do Tim the poetry. You're not yes. talking about uh, Tim Moore. No, oh, we're talking oh, about oh, Tim oh. Ellerby. <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't know Tim Ellerby. Right. Do you? Yeah. Mm, I think you've met him. Have I, think I, so. have I? I think so. Oh, okay. uh, what do you have? Well, I always got to do this one, you know, and I didn't do much politics today. I didn't do anything on global warming. I didn't <coughs> do, you know, all the battles we're fighting. I, I didn't talk about uh, the out. fact that they're c coming after Trump now big time. Hopefully, you know, we'll see the guy in prison. But anyway, uh, this, this poem and this beat out old, old piece of paper here is Uncivil Warfare. And I wrote it on uh, January the 6th, 2021. And everyone remembers when that was and what happened that day. Uh, the, the alternative title is The Turd That Hasn't Flushed. The okay. Turd That Hasn't Flushed. <laughs> On this evil and fatal occasion of the Capitol building invasion, the traitor Trump's collusion demands his execution. God yet hasn't pushed the lever on the traitor Trump forever. And when he does, it can only be hoped that it's the lever of the gas chamber. But if it's not going to be the gas chamber, let it be the lever of the federal prison. So we are not here next week. There will be a replay show. And to everybody, let's happy holidays. Enjoy your season. Be safe out there. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry New Christmas. Year. Yeah. Yeah. And You've been listening to the John Tafford Detroit Show with Dr. John Tafford and co host Charlotte Jones on WJZZ Detroit Internet Television, coming to you live every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. Also streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Contact Dr. Telford at 313-460-8272. That's 313-460-8272. Or at Dr. John Telford, EDD, at AOL.com. That's D-R-J-O-H-N-T-E-L-F-O-R-D-E-D-D -E -D -D at AOL.com. To sponsor or appear on this show, or to get signed copies of his book, which Hill Perkins, Jeffrey Figer, and Dr. Wayne Dyer all call spellbounding and sensational. It was the late, great Dr. Wayne Dyer who said, Dr. John Telford has a warrior's heart and a poet's soul. Read Dr. Telford's commentaries on the schools and other vital topics in the Telford Telescope column in the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. And also hear him on his other station, WCHB AM 